you know, someday, Matt, and the day is not today, but someday that 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 soundboard thing is going to get a little repetitive. Uh, no, that day is definitely not today. It'll <laughs> never get repetitive. <laughs> we're good, we're, unless we diversify. That's right. Someday we will get new soundboards. Uh, he's just got to say new things. New clips. All right. Mind uh, if I dobbin? <laughs> yeah, please dobbin. Yeah. Feel I'm not going to do that. Not dobbin do that. on all the haters. <laughs> <laughs> Dobbin on the haters. <laughs> Title of the episode. We invented the Terry Tomato and ways USB drives and the iron gold. Israeli salad, Uzi stents and Jaffa's orange grove. Microchips is us. iPhone cameras us. Taco salad's us. Bodanabamos us. Olive garden us. White pops for us. Welcome <laughs> to Bad Hasbara, the world's most moral podcast, and it isn't even close. I know. There's not. What's the second most moral? The second mm. most moral podcast? Hmm. If I had to. Joe Rogan experience. <laughs> and then right under that, The Daily. Right under that, that one New York Times podcast uh, where they did a series where they talked to an ISIS guy and the whole thing turned out to be a hoax. That is the fourth most moral podcast in the world. The fifth one would be a docu-series on the moral majority. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Uh, and then right under that, Dave Protnoy. Who's Dave Protnoy, Adam? Or do you want to check your typos before you pipe up there? Do you want to maybe put in the extra work there to spell yeah. check your little jokes? Yeah. <laughs> we like reading your content, Adam. But Protnoy. Use a spell check. Come use on. A spell check. Haven't you read one Philip Roth? It's not Protnoy's complaint. <laughs> Protnoy didn't fuck a liver. <laughs> Just kidding. That was a funny joke out of it was Dave Portnoy's pizza reviews. Sorry. <laughs> I don't know what I don't know what possessed me to moralize. This is the world's most moralizing podcast. That's right. Give us five stars and a review on all of the apps in which you can do that. Uh also want to make a quick shout out, of course, to our wonderful producer, Adam Levin. Uh and finally he makes he makes so few errors. No, he usually, you know, he his miss. spelling, immaculate, you know? Impeccable, just, unimpeachable. Hey, listen, this is, uh, this is, we don't expect perfection from anyone. It's progress, not perfection. It's Amda Venel. Oh, no, no. Venel? Oh, that's, he's, he's, that's, he's anagramming his own name. Ah, I love it. Dude, you got that fast. You're, you know, you're one of those smart do you have guys. Any cool, do you have any cool uh, anagrams for your name, Matt? Uh, no, I don't, but I, uh, my like username when I'm playing Call of Duty is Fat Dweeb. Okay, that's good because it rhymes with Matt Lieb. It beautifully, yes. I mean, MF Doom would be would be hard pressed to come up with a rhyme, a double rhyme. That would, mine, exactly. mine anagrams is Tame Denial. Oh, I like that. Tame Denial, yeah. that's a cool, yeah, yeah. yeah. Kate, Katie backstage is our guest backstage is saying Lieb has got bile right in it. If you if you rearrange. Mm -hmm. That's true. Bile. Yeah, it's right there. Yeah. I'm bile. Uh, just a quick announcement that, uh, you know, I've talked about this, uh, you know, Chicago shows that we're doing on the 19th and 20th. The 20th is going to be stand up uh, at the Lincoln Lodge at 7 p.m. We have added a late show at 9 p.m. So there will be another stand up show right after. If you haven't been able to get tickets, you can now get tickets to the 9 p.m. show ticket link in bio. Bye, bye, bye. Tickets, tickets, tickets. Patreon.com slash badhasbara. There is a bonus episode on the feed right now. Patreon exclusive uh, interview with Jacob Berger. Uh, great. It's a really great episode. Man, I did I fuck up because I was so late that I missed the whole thing. And I had to profusely apologize to our guest. Uh, and you know, it was such a good interview. I wish I had been there. He is so thoughtful and yeah, so it was, it, it like was very honest heartfelt. and yeah. very heartfelt. Uh, yeah. but and, then of course you did come by after the commercial break and you and I did some, uh, some dope breakdowns of some, uh, some outlandish Kenoyer Knesset. Yeah, we did. We Kinesi looked at a, a crazy, a crazy news report. 
Yes. From uh, from one of the rape riots in Israel on Israeli TV. That's right. So That's you don't right. want to miss it, folks. You know, honestly, Matt, I'm feeling like I feel like today we became a real podcast. For real? Because we put out something that was Patreon exclusive. That's right. I know. I know. Like we actually withheld. We, you know, because normally it's like join Patreon. You'll get it a bit early. And here it is. Yeah, right. But right, no, right. no, no way. No more. No more yeah. Bush League stuff like that. No, now there's no. consequences for not signing. Exactly. Up. Now the there are tears to being a bad Hasbara piggy. You know, you can be you know a freeloading hog, or you can be a pay pig. And if That's you're a right. pay pig, we love you even more. <laughs> As tears go by. That's right. Um, before we move on, I just want to say one thing that I saw in the chat. Uh, not just the chat. It was a it was a Reddit post. We've talked a lot about how we interrupt and, you know, people sometimes would be like, hey, why again? No, not but hold on. Again. But hold on. But hold on. Because for the first time ever, somebody defended us in a way in which now I can call anybody who says that we interrupt too much anti-Semitic. And I'll tell you why. <laughs> There's apparently something uh, that is called. Let me see if I can find it here. Cooperative overlap. All right. Yes, I've heard of this. Yes. Uh, is it interrupting or cooperative overlap? From the article, uh, it says cooperative overlap has been described as part of a culturally Jewish style of conversation, particularly mm -hmm. common in the New York area. A parenthetical. In fact, I first heard this conversation style labeled by a Jewish New Yorker. But it is also common in other cultural contexts, such as Eastern Europeans, Mediterranean people, Indian people, South Americans, Africans, and Arab cultures, to name a few. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, and everyone else, you're anti-Semitic if you don't like us interrupting. I'm God sorry. Right. I don't make the rules. I find them on Reddit. That's right. Okay. So let Don't us... interrupt our interrupting. That's okay? right. Exactly. Exactly. We're doing cooperative overlap. We're helping by stopping literal <laughs> professional journalists and experts from talking so we can make a Ghostbuster joke. Okay? We are that's... an overlap kibbutz. Yeah. Oh, shit. No, that's no, no. No, no, I no. I take wait. that back. I take yeah, that it's back. It's not that. Not that. Not that. Not that. We don't but, get down like that. But still, we're very cooperative. Okay. I just wanted to point that out. And now we're going to bring in our guest. Our guest. And this is a bio I'm reading from... Uh, her Instagram. Our next guest is a novelist, a Jewess, a psych PhD student, a trauma therapist, a guy sweating emoji, uh, and then water emoji researcher. I think that's sex. It's got uh, something to do with the, mm -hmm. the sexing, yeah. Yes. Uh, a uh, uh, LGBTQ plus activist, uh, cottage cottage core rabble rouser and is a wonder on tiktok and on instagram ladies and gentlemen and everyone else please welcome to the podcast katie bogan hey if it isn't oh the american gosh. jewish girl oh, katie the american jewish girl reporting for duty how you doing <laughs> it's so nice to see y'all i'm delighted to be here thanks for having me stoked Oof. to have you on it's great to I, see you too i've been uh watching your content uh for a few months now and uh it has been uh, a breath of fresh air you uh you tackle you know uh zionism and the consequences of zionism on the psyche in a way that i think is it's very uh empathetic and not um you know i don't want to say it's it's not off-putting not that it can't but things on the internet can be grating and off-putting yeah and but i mean in katie's case it's downright on putting Yes, yes, it's it's on pudding. It's, like it's, it's fucking charming, is what it is. Yes, yes, it is. Uh, and yeah, and so, I have to say, I have to say, it, it's a it's a, a much needed breath of sweet feminine fresh air on this <gasps> on this Seriously. sausage sausage factory. <laughs> yeah. I'm delighted to be the exception to the rule. Thank you very much. <laughs> we're, we're trying to be better. We're trying yeah. to hashtag yeah. hashtag Fix do yourselves. better. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you you may feel like a token right now, but mm. if you just if you go about a, five weeks into the future, you won't be because you're exactly. going to be part of a, a cohort. You're the you're the vanguard, really. Yes, you're the Exquisite. vanguard. Breaking the breaking I'm the glass ceiling. Breaking the glass ceiling. ceiling. Breaking yeah. the Thank glass. You. The, breaking the glass like at the at the <laughs> wedding. Yes. Exactly. Which one of you am I marrying? Let's figure this out right now. <laughs> you're marrying oh. the pod the podcast. <laughs> Excellent. And you're marrying Committed, the audience. Devoted. Yes. Even better. They will be thrilled to hear that. <laughs> yes. 
Uh, yeah, no, we we are delighted to have you on. You are uh, absolutely breaking up the <laughs> ridiculous male energy that we've had. You know, here's the thing about booking a podcast is you just kind of, you know, like, yeah, you reach out, you DM, like, hey, come on the podcast. And then a month goes by and you're like, it's been all dudes for <laughs> weeks now. Uh, but anyways, that's not the point. The point isn't <laughs> self-criticism. What is this? Communist China? No. What is this? What, what is, is this? this? A Jewish a feminist, culture? A yeah. feminist re-education camp? Yeah. What is this? A struggle session? What is yes. this? Some feminazi stuff? Like, come on. <laughs> Katie, you've only yes. been on the podcast for three minutes and you're already throwing us into a masculinity crisis and you haven't even said anything. Can we shut up Exquisite. and let her talk, please? Exquisite. Exquisite. Yes, no, this is my role, actually, to just sit here and watch you all cogitatively melt down. <laughs> <laughs> we can't help it. I'm here to prompt an identity crisis for you. You've done a great job of it. Thank you. Speaking of identity crises, <laughs> segue into uh, the type of content that you do. Uh, when did you start uh, openly like talking about uh, Zionism? Uh, you know, with your with your audience. So interestingly, my very first post coming out, coming out in support of Palestine as a Jewish woman was in 2014. Mm -hmm. um, after I had gone on a birthright trip. And I posted on Facebook back when everybody used Facebook. Mm -hmm. um, and I got a phone call from my father at oh work. I was working in the sociology department at Clark University as an administrative assistant. Mm -hmm. And so I'm in the front office and my dad calls me and he yelled at me so loudly over the phone that I had to hold the phone away from my ear. And my boss in the next room over heard this conversation and came in and was like, mm, who's shouting at you? And I was like, my dad just found out that I support the liberation of Palestine. Um, and that's when I was like 19, 20 years old. Yeah. Um, and so I've been posting incrementally over the last decade really and quite a bit in 2021 um during the last sort of massive bombardment of Gaza and then October 7th happened and I was just like okay this is this is what I feel the ethical pull to talk about now and it totally changed um my social media landscape yeah I mean I can imagine that the audience that you were speaking to pre-October 7th and the audience post-October 7th was different. Uh, did did you get pushback once you kind of started talking about this? Yes, and I've gotten pushback as I've actually tried to wed or weave my content a little bit more intentionally. So I, I work as a sex researcher and I'm being trained as a sex therapist for trauma survivors. Mm. So I work mostly with people who've experienced some form of sexual violence um, to enable them to have joyful, consensual, fully embodied, intimate lives. That's what my platform really was before October 7th. So if you go to my TikTok, my name on TikTok is Sexuality Scholar. And I right. was talking about, you know, pleasure activism and all these other things. Um, and so I think it was a shock for my then audience to have such a hard pivot but now, as I try to weave some more of my academic work and my, you know, sex research scholarship through both of my pages, through my Instagram and my TikTok, there's a lot of um, responses to it that find it, I think, quite distasteful. And that's been that's been an interesting landmine situation to navigate. Yeah, it's 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 it must be very challenging when your public persona bifurcates into two things even though it's coming from the same person and then people you know uh cathect or, or connect with one or the other i mean when you and i met back in the fall and i have a sort of follow-up question for you about this but i remember mm -hmm. you and i were both tapped to be part of um an anti anti-zionist hanukkah thing eight of us yep. were you know and i was new on the scene of of being a content monger or whatever we were called <laughs> content pusher uh, yeah, it's a monger we're mongers <laughs> we're mongers we're like fish mongers but our fish yeah. is you know little little jokes that's exactly right lovely and and often starts to smell um and uh yeah you 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 were catching some flack at the time for talking about the role of of pleasure in keeping ourselves sane as we live through a time of unspeakable vicarious uh trauma witnessing unspeakable direct trauma and i i remember just really being struck by how well you 
responded to all that and, and, you know, made a really compelling case that, look, if this part of my content isn't for you, it's not for you. But to me, it's important and I'm going to keep saying it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was wild. Matt, I'm not sure how familiar you are with this situation, but um, I was part of this panel that Daniel was talking about, all we want for Hanukkah is a free Palestine. Um, And I was, you know, we were talking about self-care and how you sort of maintain sanity and groundedness in the context of global evil and atrocity. And I talked about how in the context of the COVID-19 epidemic in um, 2020, we're all in our homes spending all this time alone with our bodies. And I had been, you know, going to sex therapy myself as a way to sort of prepare for this doctoral program and seeing what I could learn. And Mm -hmm. um, one of the things I initiated again in 2020 was a daily orgasm practice of like a way of getting in the body because when you are disconnected from the body and so alienated from the somatic experience, you can no longer feel or label your emotions because Mm. so much of the wisdom we have about our emotions comes from our embodied state of is my heart racing am i sweating are my hands tingling is the hair on the back of my neck standing up like what do i feel and when you're witnessing trauma over and over and over again you learn to disconnect frequently from the body as a means of survival Um, and so i started this daily orgasm practice and brought it up as an example during this panel of ways to get into the body and included you know praying eating a really luscious meal taking a bath brushing your hair putting on body lotion whatever it is to you that forces you to feel something sensory Mm. because drawing that thread back to your body over and over and over again is going to help you have more emotional awareness literacy and be able to move through feelings and this clip was cut into like a 90 second soundbite and shared on the internet of this white jewish girl is getting off to palestinian death and genocide oh my god and and it was shared by like u.s state senators on tiktok like the internet ripped me apart in a way that i was not anticipating and i had to do the the sort of intellectual quandary thing of okay, do I apologize and self-flagellate and say this was a horrible, disgusting thing to say and you're all right, I'm I'm a wicked, evil, insensitive person. and White woman this, and I will do better. Yes, yes, like I'm, I'm so sorry for everything I've ever done. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Adam um, wrote, the female orgasm is not Jewish. <laughs> no, uh, the, the female orgasm is it's for trafe. everyone. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, And I had to make the decision of, you know, do I try to maintain this sort of good girl, good girl, purity oriented reputation online? Or do I say like, no, this is this is a part of my research and what I've learned about trauma treatment. Like this is actually an area of expertise for me now. Right. I'm getting my Ph.D. in this. um, And I think there's there's wisdom to be learned here and wisdom that didn't originate from me, like Adrienne Marie Brown, this black feminist activist who wrote um, who wrote pleasure activism and has really taught people about the role of embodied pleasure and maintaining movements for social justice. Like I wasn't the first person to say anything like this, Um, but that has been, again, a a land of minds. So I I, I found that so, do you mind if I just please dig into this a little bit more, Matt? Yeah. Conversational. I I found it. I've, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, um, may the best interruption win. Uh, (laughs) I found it so instructive at the time because it was the first time it really, I, I saw that one of the aspects of speaking up and putting your voice out there. I mean, for the first few months, I was just blown away by the positive feedback and the gratitude and the thanks. People were hungry for, especially and inordinately Jewish voices. It was, an, we had an unfair kind of, um, we got extra credit, extra valor for just <laughs> for not being, being genocidal, and, for not being genocidal, which is uh, yeah, a, good for us. Kind of an, it's kind of an anti-Semitic handicap, but that's Israel's yeah. fault, not anyone Grotesque. else's fault. Yeah. I, yep. I would rep- respond to all those people with, you're right. I am amazing for not wanting an entire group of people to die. <laughs> that's I'm a mean. good man. <laughs> and not using the death of my grandparents to justify that yeah, desire. Exactly. <laughs> you know, exactly. Good for us learning something after age 13. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, but but what came with it eventually is that people develop a certain version of you, a certain yes. idea of you, you know, and it's happened to, you know, musicians and artists and anyone sure. who, who, who develops a public. And I had to deal with that myself, too, like 
at one point I sort of came to your defense and people were mad at me about that, calling me a, a savior and all this kind of shit. At other points, I would say stuff that just, and the question for me is, well, yeah, is the right thing to do as an activist to try and walk some kind of line? But then I actually realized partly through your example, there's no way of doing that. If you play that game, you lose. Because yes. people will say, for instance, listen to Palestinians. And then the question is, which Palestinians? You go into the comments on your videos and there were all kinds of people saying, I'm Palestinian. And I completely got what Katie was saying. You all are right. twisting it. I see value in it. Or I'm Palestinian and you know what? And I'm, I'm Muslim and this isn't really for me. It's not my vibe, but she's speaking to a different audience and so on and so forth. So the, the expectation that I should treat the Palestinians as some kind of monolith mm -hmm. and use a particular subset of them who are going to be offended by this as the standard for who they all are. I was like, you know what, actually that's not, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna play that game. I'm not serving anyone. I'm not freeing anything by doing that. How can I free free Palestine if I'm not free free myself to just mm. say what I think and stand on my whatever and let people disagree. And if I make a mistake, I'll correct it, but I'm not gonna grovel and I'm not gonna do that. Cause I, I just didn't think it ends up being performative and that's my soapbox. And I wonder what you have to say about that. Yeah, I entirely agree. I think um, I didn't want to, obviously, I'm not going to out anyone who's seeking help or, or support. And people know that I'm being trained as a trauma therapist, that sexual functioning is one of my areas of expertise. And that video came out in my responses to, to those, you know, some of the backlash. And I had tons of people in my DMs saying, you know, I'm Palestinian and I'm living in the diaspora and I have not been able to have sex with my husband for months. And mm. every time I experience pleasure in the body, I have this immense feeling of guilt. What do I do? And so I was telling people, you know, I, I can't therapize online. I can say what I know of the literature and encourage you to go see a therapist who is indeed your own. Um, but we know that exposure therapy, like there's a logic to exposure therapy. And so if you're experiencing something that is literally safe, but your body is interpreting it as threatening, you have to sit in that feeling for long enough for your stress response cycle to resolve. And so mm. if you start experiencing pleasure in the body, say you're, you're putting lotion on your hands or brushing your hair or masturbating or whatever it is that you're doing, and something in your body is telling you you should feel guilt you should feel shame you should feel fear like this is something that's going to cause you to panic mm. if you stay in that experience and keep an eye on your distress you will see the distress initially spike of oh this is a bad thing that i'm doing this is a dangerous thing that i'm doing whatever and then you stay and it comes down and you get to watch that stress response cycle resolve and that's teaching your body that you know by experiencing pleasure you're not actually being chased by a lion you're not doing something disgusting and awful you're not a horrible person it's going to be okay if you let yourself feel this. And so I really felt like I was able to disseminate um, some research and some clinical wisdom to folks who really needed support. And I wasn't going to screen grab those conversations and say to the haters, like, you know, you're, you're giving me all of this flack. And yet I have Palestinian folks in my right. inbox who really need someone to validate that they deserve to have an intimate life right now. Yeah. Um, and that in fact, pleasure and joy are these forms of necessary <clears throat> resistance to remind you of what you're fighting for for other people. Like everyone should be able to access pleasure as a, as a self-soothing resource, as a resource to maintain their well-being when the world is on fire. Mm -hmm. um, so that's my soapbox. And I think it's all ridiculous in terms of like really what they're mad at here is like the most bad faith reading of all time of a out of context clip. I mean, what kind of insanity would lead you to believe that, that what you're seeing is that is like, oh, yeah, this person's masturbating <laughs> like to, you know, dead policy. Like you have to be already yeah. a little bit off your rocker. To and believe. to be very clear, there were a lot of white people in that of outraged course. on behalf Obviously. of the Palestinians cohort. Yes, yes, they yes. Got you, you know. That's my favorite yeah. cohort of commenter is uh, mm -hmm. outraged white person uh, speaking over other people. <laughs> the as an the as an allies. Yes, the as yes. an allies, exactly. Mm -hmm. um, so I just wanna uh, circle back to your birthright trip because I have a similar experience in terms of like birthright for me was the big eye opener. Uh, was that for you? Was it the trip itself that was uh, the eye opener or was it just after you went that time you kind of started doing research or, or what was it about the I trip? Th 
I think it really started before. So I grew up in very small town, Connecticut. My family was one of three Jewish families in our town. And then we had our rabbi's family. So my town was like 99% Christian, 98% white. Like just, I I learned almost nothing of the world growing up in this area of Connecticut. But my family took a lot of pride in being like sort of progressive New Englanders. And I grew up in the aftermath and sort of in the context of 9-11. I was born in 1993. Mm-hmm. Um, did did and, you ever, ever, did you ever have a rabbi who spoke with like a new, new England, like Puritan, like accent? Not even uh, a little. I can't, um, I, I can't do it, but I'd, I'd love to hear that. I'd love to hear the Hebrew prayers spoken <laughs> like, I don't know, Captain Ahab or something. <laughs> Um, my rabbi, Rabbi Eisenbach, um, uh-huh. it was a Hasidic Chabad that I grew up going to because oh, wow. that was the oh, okay. only Jewish organizing space in my town. Sure. Um, so no, the Chabad was not very waspy, <laughs> you <Yeah>. can imagine. <laughs> that would be great. <laughs> um, yeah, that'd be wild. Um, but I think my family took Matzah a Bal lot Chowda. of... Yeah, perfect. <laughs> exactly yeah. that. Um, my family took a lot of pride in being like good progressive New Englanders who in the aftermath of 9-11 would sort of finger wag at anti-Muslim sentiment and finger wag at this sort of wave of hatred and say like, you know, we don't treat Muslim people that way. We don't condemn an entire religious group. We, We don't generalize folks. And then I had loved ones coming back from birthright. And around when I was 17, 18, I started getting more involved in progressive activism. And I heard language referring to Palestine for the first time. Like I was really not familiar with what Palestine was as as this space, who Palestinians were as a community. This was brand new information for me. And so as my loved ones started coming back from birthright, I would ask the question, what did you learn about Palestine? What did you learn about Palestinians when you were there? And I remember having this conversation again with like a good progressive Jew. And she said to me, oh, you mean the terrorists? When I asked this question about Palestinians and I had never heard her use the word terrorists to describe an entire group of people before. And I was so stricken by that use of language. Um, And I was going to this liberal arts school in Massachusetts for college, and they had this great, really progressive political science department, a Holocaust and genocide studies program. Um, And I knew I was going to go on birthright and was so concerned seeing folks come back from birthright seemingly brainwashed that I wanted to be prepared. And so I took four very intentional courses on the region and I wanted to get sort of balanced perspective. So I took Jewish experience, suffering and evil in the Jewish tradition, Middle East politics and Arab Israeli conflict. And I was also taking peripheral courses in comparative political science and Holocaust and genocide studies. Um, God, you used your undergrad studies far better than I did. I I re- I was like, I need to dig out this information that yeah. people have been hiding from me. Like somehow I have to circumnavigate this silence in my community. So I took all this <laughs> course. Sorry. <laughs> he wrote suffering, suffering and evil in the Jewish tradition is a course on child rearing. You know, I'll get back to you on that as soon as I have kids. <laughs> he's, he's right. <laughs> we'll report back. Oh, he's right. Oh. Um but yeah, I, I tried to prepare myself before I went on the birthright trip. And then by the time I left, I was already staunchly pro-Palestine. I had learned enough in my coursework to to know that what I had been socialized into was just buckets and buckets of bullshit and silencing. Right. And I could they tell really disgusted. when you were there? Were oh, they on to you? Could they ever? Yes, yeah, I yeah. scrapped with my tour guide the entire time. I had a tour guide yep. named Ayal, who was a veteran of the Second Lebanon War. and um, You mean the talked- one where they got their asses kicked? Ha 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 ha. Yeah. Yes. Um, yeah. And so talked all the time so about how loser. he yeah. he was an objective reporter on what mm. it was like to to navigate this conflict, genocide, ethnic cleansing, apartheid regime, mm. etc. Um, and I I just fought with him the entire time. He would refer to all Palestinians as Hamas or as terrorists. And I would say, you have a group. Yes. Like you have a group of impressionable 18 to 26 year old diaspora Jews in who have come to you thinking that you're going to disseminate some wisdom right. and instead you're spitting propaganda in their faces like this is inexcusable what about settlements what about the water crisis israel has this incredible desalination technology they've, they've been able to farm in the negev why is there a water cri- crisis in Gaza? like explain this to me as if i am a toddler please and and he would just say terrorists 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 you know spit out this hasbara all these talking points and 
by the end of the trip, he would give us another lecture on Israeli Zionist supremacy. And we would leave and the other folks on the trip would come up to me and say, okay, now we've heard what Ayal has to say. What did you learn in your classes? And we were pulling up Google Scholar and Googling sort of Palestinian history on this Mm -hmm. trip. And I feel very grateful that some of the folks that I met there are still incredibly vocal pro-Palestine anti-Zionist Jews. So we built this little community. But at the end of the trip, I thought this guy was going to say, fuck you, I never want to see you again. And instead, he like invited me back to Israel several times. I was just going to ask, at what point did he give up on trying to Hasbarize you? And did he, what, at what point did he try to seduce you as the final, the final I mean, overture? So, so seduction is obviously like a main theme of birthright. They bring all these oh, sexy yeah. Israeli soldiers Sexual and they're like, look, Zion. you can have Jewish babies with these uh-huh. gun toting macho yeah. people. And I'm like, mm, yeah. <laughs> not my type, but thank you. It's, um, it's by ever, the way, I just want to say gotten, it is, yeah. it's so it's one of the rudest things that they do because they also are like, not only are they just like, here's uh, us objectifying all of our, you know, hottest female soldiers. Um, but they're also just like, and look at all these beta male schlubs from the diaspora who are just like, yeah. ooh, please shoot me. Shoot me with your gun, please. <laughs> like, it's, the, the expectation it's also- that that we're just so beta that we're just going to be like, it's time to uproot my life and move. <laughs> what, I, what I find terrible, you know how they say, you know, porn ruins men's brains. and all yeah, that. yeah, yeah. Well, birthright has, has ruined an entire generation. Yeah. Of of young Jewish men, they can't come unless the person giving them head has an M16 strap. That's exactly That's right. It's so yeah. sad for them. It's really Oh no, really sad it's for my them. kink. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Um, kink shame, not kink shame, you know, that's right. Let's, let's play with power. Um, <laughs> anyway, how did we get here? Um, yeah. So I really do think, I mean, birthright is obviously sold as this, like, oh, you can make Jewish babies with the hottest iteration of Jews possible and the iteration of Jews with the most power who can protect you. And it's all based on this, like gender essentialism, biological essentialism, mm-hmm. privileging mm-hmm. and violence. Um, Come to Israel, put the U in eugenics. That's right. <laughs> exactly that yes. yeah um yes use your uterus to uphold this regime we love it yeah um <laughs> super normal t- super normal thing to ask anybody is uh, mm-hmm. is to use their dna as uh, a cudgel against an entire group of people yeah like, and don't worry men pregnant? men if you die on the battlefield we we'll will ex- be there to extract your <laughs> we'll seed extract yeah. your <laughs> we've got you a needle needle immediately yeah. um yeah, I mean, I I do think, well, I, the 18 to 26 year old age limitation is so transparent. It's yeah. like your frontal lobe is not fully developed. Yeah. You're reproductively viable. You've got all these years to give to, to military service. You mm-hmm. f- have this youth that gives you this sense of immortality. So you're willing to take these incredible physical risks and like put yourself on a battle line. Just very strategic. Um, but yes, I do think the last step was not only seduction, but an attempted change of my team of mm. which not to make um, queer bisexual jokes, but she is representing mm-hmm. of <laughs> a change of my team. Like we could use you. You're smart. You're incisive. You have yeah. something to say. And if you were on our team, we know you could do a lot of good. So here's what we're offering you. We're offering you this myth that'll make you feel cozy, cozy and supreme for the rest of your life. You'll get to feel superior to all these other people and we can use your skills and those things will just catapult you into the echelons of this intellectualist society and also be really cool if you could make Jewish babies. Yeah. And for people who have no moral backbone or no ethical backbone, I'm sure that's a sexy offer, but I yeah. found it so, I found it and continue to find it so off-putting. <laughs> did they, did they try to sell you on Tel Aviv's, you know, bisexual friendly culture, send you to a dyke bar, you know? Yeah. Were they Not just even like... a little. Oh. Yeah. Because that's a that, opportunity. I mean, I think that makes it less likely that I'm ha- going to have Jewish babies for them in their mind. Oh, sure, like, sure. I think it was still very heteronormative of like, we've got to find you a guy who's going to win you permanently over to the man team and right. also like lock that's you in, doing a, too in much. a kitchen. Yeah. That's doing too much. They should They're just trying to go get with you the... to switch too many teams. That's too many team it. switching. Be like, adopt Jewish babies. Right. Mm. Yeah. With your hot IDF Sabra <laughs> wife. Wife, yeah. yeah. Toppy mask energy wife. Yeah. I... I I'm uh, I'm jealous that they they use the seduction tactic uh, on you at the end because um, my my tour guide 
literally after I said, uh, "Hey, you know, thanks for thanks for a great trip. It was really this is a really you know great time." And he was just said, "Go home, Matt." <laughs> <laughs> Which I was like, fuck. <laughs> At that point, I think I had made it clear that, uh, you know, I was, uh, I don't know, I was just taking the piss out of it the whole time. Yeah. Um, well, I hear they, I hear they gather all people like the two of you at the end of Birthright. I, I didn't do Birthright. I did a Habonim program called Workshop, which was ten months long, which gave us it's better uh, than Birthright. A fuller, it is better. It's it's still highly limited, but sure. But anyway, but I hear they gather people these days, and if if there's any dissidents, you know, if they sense that you're not quite on board. They gather you and they tell you you have the birthright to remain silent. Oh <laughs> so yeah, back yeah. to North America. <laughs> yes, yes. Oh, what a long way to go, Daniel. <laughs> well, I was trying to give a conversation. I was trying to give a segue type pun. You know, it was and beautiful. It- yeah, thank you. Uh, I speaking... thought you were just going to say they like hand you to people that are playing Palestinians mm-hmm. and then have those people right, playing yes. Palestinians throw you off a building to contribute that's to this right. mythology that that's indeed what will happen to you. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They, they like to throw off the roof. It's a thing. Oh my gosh. Uh, speaking of having the birthright to remain silent, uh, the Democratic nominee for <sighs> the president of the United States is a cop. Oh. So uh, we should talk a little bit about that. We'll get more into that specific. But it's worse than story. it's worse than that, Matt. Is it? She's a she's a cop with a Goyasha running mate. I know, I know. Not a Jew as a running mate. That's <laughs> I think we all know anti-Semitic. That's humiliating. Um, very humiliating for us as a people. We didn't suffer for thousands of years uh, in order to not get Josh Shapiro to be the vice presidential pick um yeah in order to not occupy the most useless position in the entire country yes uh and we're gonna get into that first but i just want to uh show a little bit of uh, she had a rally recently um in wisconsin uh and michigan um, no michigan yeah this is the one where she where she in detroit yeah, no, she, you're right. But uh, there was also very recently a oh. Wisconsin rally oh, that, that happened in which got there it. was a very special guest. Uh, Bonnie Ver showed up. Oh, this one. And, yeah, great. Yeah, yeah. and uh, he uh, played a song. And here's the thing. I, Bonnie Ver is what, truly one of my favorite artists, and he sung an old patriotic classic that I just wanted to play on the pod because I just thought it was, like, so good. Like, he's he's great. You know? He's out here with a, a nice... Uh, Old patriotic song that's uh, that's been rolling around my head these last months, and I uh, love this melody. I love y'all. Appreciate you. Oh, I'm and, so uh, worried. We're here for the right reasons, and we all know what we're here for. So we're gonna do our thing, make this music, and make make way for the people that we need to hear from. Oh yeah, there we go. Daniel's got the records. Classic. Yeah. <laughs> so, do you think you just fell out of the coconut tree? Damn. <laughs> do you think you just yeah. fell out of a coconut tree? You exist in the context of all you live and what I came before you. You exist in the context of all you live and what I came before just a beautiful oh, song. Matt. Oh, man. Uh, you know, he's just one of the great artists of our time. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I have I, I have time on my hands, guys. And sometimes I'm like, oh, I'm going to make Body Bear sing uh, some Kamala quotes. That'll That's be fun. That's so funny. I'm a fucking idiot. Uh, but yes, there uh, <laughs> there's a bunch of outrage that happened. And the, and the name of that song would just be like Sheboygan or something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What? Oh, Sheboygan, because he wrote it in Sheboygan. Yeah. Um, yeah. So uh, we're going to get into all these stories about how people, uh, at least Zionist Twitter uh, and you know Zionist Twitter adjacent people, um, and not only that, but a lot of mainstream media sources, uh, a lot of op eds r- uh, written recently about how disturbing it is that uh, what's his name, Tim Walls. Um, Tim Walls was picked instead of Josh Shapiro. And we're going to get into all of that. But first, we have to take a quick commercial break. All right. 
Tim Sugar Walls. <laughs> uh, From the so, window to the Tim Walls. Yes. Till the sweat. Well, anyways. Runs through the halls. No, there power. we go. Of Congress. Classy. Classy. Yeah. Yep. Thank you for keeping it Way to class it, class. it up, Daniel. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, so, yeah. So, please stick around. And we will be right back. Jumping Jacks was us. And we're back. Wow. Great ads Oof. that we had. We had great ads. Uh, but yes, so this story has been uh, a lot of fun to watch because I feel like ever since Josh Shapiro was mentioned as a possible vice presidential candidate, uh, there's a certain segment of people who have just completely lost their minds uh, online who just they, they feel like this is a an inroads into a critique of the democratic party as being openly anti-semitic or having anti-semitic somehow baked in because of the fact that they didn't choose him uh and i want to start with a clip from van jones <laughs> oh friend of the jews friend of the <laughs> jews van jones uh he he went on uh like cnn and uh he talked about how troubling it is that Josh Shapiro wasn't chosen. You think it was a little risky, though, Van, yeah. that, that, that she didn't go with Shapiro to kind of lock down Pennsylvania? I mean, yes, yeah. David Challing was saying earlier, just because you pick him as your running mate doesn't mean you automatically win Pennsylvania. But I got to think it would have helped just a little bit. Hey, listen, that, that, the, the conservatives, the right wing, the Republicans, they were chewing their fingernails down to the knuckle because they were afraid of a Josh Shapiro. They were afraid of a Mark Kelly. They're not as afraid of this uh, new governor because they think they can define him. Uh, and I, but, so he, here's the challenge you've got in this party. Uh, and you know, people don't want to talk about it, we got to talk about it. On the one hand, you have a, a lot of young people who are concerned about Gaza. You have a lot of Muslims and Arabs and others. They have not felt seen by the Biden administration. Uh, you start seeing. <laughs> I love that. I love that the critique that they think they're hearing is, "Oh, is it that you guys don't feel seen?" Yeah. Is that what it is? Is it is it the, is it the lack of representation? And it's like, can we go? Can we dig a little bit deeper, or or not even? Actually, can we can we stop with the use of this wishy washy liberal language for a second? And it's like those people are saying, "My relatives are dead." Those people yeah, Katie, are saying, I, "Genocide bad." <laughs> I wonder as someone who's training to be a therapist and who's, you know, in both the activist and the psychology self-help therapy space, have you noted, like I have also sort of the way when you mix these two things, it, it fucks both of them. Like politics is not therapy and therapy yeah. has political content, but you know what I'm saying? Like, what do you, what do you do with that? The, the way especially the Democrats love to use especially therapy the, speak. The way it's used in bad faith to uphold kind of these like arguments that invariably lead you to voting for whatever Democrats say is good. We see yeah. you, we hear you, mm -hmm. and your point of view about us funding the incineration <laughs> right. of your entire bloodline valid. is valid. Yeah. I mean, I really think the whole like lesser of two evils argument, a lot of it's like cognitive manipulation. A lot of the use mm. of language is cognitive manipulation of, you know, we have this uh, set of values that we ascribe to a certain kind of language. And that is prompted very falsely when we hear the way that people mm. talk about this in the news. Um, and I like to highlight like even the human shields language that we hear all the time is like something that's humanizing followed by something that's immediately dehumanizing. And right. so the, the associations that we make are like, Oh, human shields, then, then they're not a person at all. They're just this steel that is put together to defend yes. whatever. It's true. Um, How far apart are human shields and human animals really? Right. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. I'm like, I think you mean beings. I think the second word you're looking yeah. for is beings. Yeah. Um, but no, I think the, the lefts or not even the left Democrats attempt to sort of, court the left or court liberals by yes. using soft squishy language as yes. if we're just a totally irrational people yes. totally ruled by our emotional states and our <laughs> immediate responses and we don't have higher order thinking is so fucking backwards because i really think 
what is what is happening here is the people who are advocating for Gaza and for Palestinian liberation are accessing their higher order thinking and superseding sort of typical binarist bias and superseding mm-hmm. socialization and propaganda and and saying okay let's actually look at history and facts and wed our our wise mind our like rational mind and our emotional mind to come to a conclusion that makes sense about the fact that genocide is inexcusable, people are dying en masse, it's being justified in these frou-frou ways, and we disagree with that. And then the people who are failing to use their higher order cognitive thinking are those that are constantly fear mongering and just saying, oh, like it's either us or them, it's kill or be killed, we have to mm-hmm. wipe out all of them, otherwise Jews won't exist anywhere. Blah, 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 blah. And yeah. I'm like, oh, so so you can't sit in empathy for two minutes and construct a more nuanced understanding of this, and thus you're gonna assume that I can't construct a nuanced understanding of this either. It's embarrassing. It's yeah. embarrassing. It is. And and it's also, you know, the way it's used in Van Jones's context here is he he is framing this uh, as on the one hand, you have people who don't want to be seen or, or who feel like they're not being seen. And on the other hand, you have the this very real feeling that it is anti-Semitic to not go with the guy that we picked, <laughs> you know, in the <laughs> not even she didn't pick him just. You know, different uh, media figures who are just like, it's got to be Josh Shapiro. Uh, it like that. It that framing in and of itself is like being between two people's distinct groups' uh, feelings. I'm just like you're 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 fucking you're knowingly uh, making this into something that it's not. It's like you are you're you're obfuscating what the actual you know demand is from people. Yeah. you're fucking who, lying is what yeah. you're doing. Yeah, Banjo- we have. You know, have you seen the the clip of him as a student activist, yes. rabble rousing? We don't yes. have that, do we, Matt? Oh, uh, of course we do. <laughs> it's really something. Yes, it's really is... something. I mean, maybe do you want to hear him hear out the rest of the history? Students could do that in 1960. The students could do that in 1970. The students could do that in 1985, 86, in 1993, when we have the United States government building a death camp. A concentration camp mm. for black people who have done nothing wrong but get sick and want justice. That's all they've done wrong. If we can't close that death camp, if this generation cannot prevent another Japanese American internment in our lifetime, we should all get haircuts and go get regular jobs and give it up. He got a haircut and then he got a regular job and gave it up. And he gave it up. Damn. I mean, he was, you know, I, 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 my mind goes to what George Galloway said about Christopher Hitchens in that famous debate they had. Where what he did says, he say? Ladies and gentlemen, uh, I'm, I'm going gonna, gonna to do it in Scottish. Scottish I, well, yeah, yeah. You have just witnessed yeah. a, f- a first in natural history, Ooh. the first ever metamorphosis of a butterfly back in. <laughs> Into a slug, because he was praising how how beautiful Hitchens was, you know. <laughs> Best Shrek movie. Best Shrek, Shrek de- movie. Shrek debates Hitch- Hitchens. But yeah, uh, no, like 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 it's incredible what happens with an with a CNN contract. Well, first with a job in the Obama administration. Sure. Yeah. But I mean, like to to continue Van yeah, Jones, sorry. uh, like this clip. Do you think it was a little risky? Let's let's just keep this going because uh, I think it's great. Party, uh, and you know people don't want to talk about it. We got to talk about it. Who doesn't? On want the to one talk hand, you it? have a, a lot of young people who are concerned about Gaza. You have a lot of Muslims and Arabs and others. They have not felt seen mm. by the Biden administration. Yeah, uh, mm. you start start hearing that genocide joke. That was building. That was building. Mm. And so those folks needed to have a, a candidate that they could feel comfortable with. This helps them in that regard. <laughs> but you also have anti-Semitism. That has gotten marbled into this party. You can be you know, for uh, the Palestinians without being an anti-Jewish bigot. Best part of are... best part of the pastrami. <laughs> yes, is it's the, the marbled, marbled anti-Semitism. Anti-Semitism, yeah. yeah, delicious. I love it. There are some anti-Jewish bigots out there, and there's some disquiet like, now. Like a fine wagyu. <laughs> wagyu, yeah. yeah. Oh, is it wagyu? All right. Wagyu, yeah. wagyu. Be, how much yeah, of fancy. what just happened? is caving into some of these darker parts in the party. So that's going to have to get worked out. It's going to have to get talked through. 
Yeah, I, mean, I feel like this is the new liberal snowflake, right? Yes. The people who are advocating for Gaza and Palestine are just really sensitive and myopic, and it's all yes. about their feelings, and they just mm-hmm. want to be seen, as opposed to, as you said before, like, no, my family is dead. Right, yeah. Or and also, like, as opposed to who are being the real snowflakes right now. Right. All the, all the anti-identity politics warriors, all the anti-woke warriors. Yes. Uh, the, the, the Bungar Sargons, who I think we have some tweets from. Oh, yeah, I got Batya. You think I don't we have a, we have a We have a Bungar banger. Yeah, we got a, a Bungar banger here. Uh, this is something. Live uh, this... from Bangor, Maine. We have a bu- <laughs> Bungar banger in Bangor. Uh, it's me, Batya. You don't want to go down that road. Uh, <laughs> is that Stephen that, King or something? Yeah, that road's only for Jews. Uh, <laughs> we're all anti-Semitic down here. Yeah, here we're all anti-Semitic. All right, so uh, yeah, this was in response to uh, you know just like uh, talking about Josh Shapiro not getting it. Uh, th- this is something she wrote. Uh, Batya, I think she used to be the editor in chief of the Forward. I don't know if she still is. Um, I don't know what's going on with the Forward, but no, she's uh, with the backward now. Yes, <laughs> my fellow American Jews, it's time to have a little self-respect and walk away from a party that's telling your children they can't be vice president <laughs> because the anti-Semites in the party might, must not be upset. This Moisha, is- Moisha, let come here. Sit on daddy's knee. <laughs> yes, Papa. I have something you'll, very... You'll never be vice president. <laughs> you, you know your dream? Yes. Of being just like Selena Meyer? Yes. <laughs> it's not going to happen. America's no. not ready for that. <laughs> but, but why, Papa? Why, Papa? <laughs> no, why you'll have I to settle. Like... You'll have to settle for marrying a mixed race South, South Asian Indian black woman. You mean be and the being first, the first husband? Oh, no. <laughs> But that's emasculating. I don't know why this is my little Jewish boy. <laughs> Speaking of betas, like, let's just lean all the way in, Matt. <laughs> yeah, Matt, I've asked you before, don't bring your bedroom voice into the podcast. <laughs> this is a voice I... That's for your wife. Okay, Katie That voice is for your shame, wife. not king shame. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Thank you, Katie. Unbelievable how many times you got kink shamed on this podcast. <laughs> Um, well, I get I get think sh- I get think shamed. All you the do time. get think shamed, um, but yeah. So you've got Batya, who you know is like one of a handful of these like Barry Weiss adjacent anti uh, identity politics warriors who like you know have they're the uh, progressive and uh, until Palestine of the right. You know, yeah. like these are are people who free are, speech, free speech until Palestine. Uh, speech. Yeah, mm-hmm. exactly. Um, and so it's like it's just so funny watching them all bend over backwards to try to make this about anti-Semitism when these are also all the same people who were like when the left was canvassing for Bernie Sanders, who were just like, uh, you know basically doing anti-semitic canards against him just being like buddy look at how he talks with his hands he just gesticu- <laughs> gesticulates too much and he's we he's brought in yelling. this german body language expert to <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. besides you know but i think it's nice about you because basically what she's saying to people is it's true walk away from this party and go yeah, vote sure for the, go go vote for the only jew on the ticket jill or on the thing jill stein jill stein yeah do it yeah mm-hmm. and, and it's just so Pro funny Gaza. Because you just know that it's uh, it's coming from a place of having a like a worldview that is not set because you are stuck. This is the thing about a lot of conservative Jews uh, in America, uh, at least the ones who have like a platform, is they are like Ben Shapiro. They're stuck in a world in which like the right wing does explicitly talk shit about Jews to them, yeah. but they have had to re. Uh, frame anti-Zionism uh, as anti-Semitism and not just as anti, but like as the only expression of anti-Semitism that can exist. Right. The thing that makes me so fucking furious about this too is like this plays directly into evangelical Christianity and Christian Zionism. Like how oh, yeah. convenient for them, yes. how great for them to have the only form of anti-Semitism that counts be the one that just happens to bring their Messiah back so that we all go to hell and get tortured for eternity and yeah. they get sucked up into glittery heaven. I'm like, oh, great for y'all. And there are 30 times as many of you as there are of us. Yes. <laughs> well, I mean, that's just a coincidence, Katie. That I just know, happens to be how it, it works out. All right. Yes. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I just want to read a little bit from an article that came out in the Hollywood Reporter. 
Um, oh, a reliable source. Let's go. This is so funny. <laughs> I'm in. This is hilarious. I love when the like the the Hollywood like you know industry rags. Uh, randomly decide to get into uh you know israel politics because like first of all it's like it's it's very embarrassing for like the rest of american jewry when hollywood is just like i'm gonna dip my toe into this conversation uh and it j just because it just they're just feeding into everyone's anti-semitism that's just like oh god all right so here's here's a little bit of this <laughs> article it's called why liberal jews feel worried about Kamala Harris bypassing John Sapir. Uh, you got to read Shapiro. the you got to read the subheader. Yes, subheading. Among some Jewish American producers, agents, and executives. <laughs> great, great expertise. Scene, in, yeah. scene, interior, yeah. Warner Brothers. <laughs> yeah. There's, a, there's Jaime a, Mendelstein, yeah. a high-powered agent, picks yeah. up the phone, dial, yeah. <laughs> says to the intercom. Angie, get me, sh get me Shlomo Finkelberg. <laughs> yeah, I know. This is at W W. A rich person called us to complain. At, at so. William Morris, you know. Oh, dude. Have you heard this? They're saying we control everything. Yeah, I mean, it's like I love a text description of a Nazi cartoon. You know what I mean? It's just like, <laughs> yeah. come on. <laughs> Uh, Jewish producers, uh, uh, Jewish American producers, agents, and executives, there's a sense that even if the VP pick was the result of electoral calculations, those calculations come with baked in anti Semitic assumptions about the electorate. Once again, we're back to this term baked in. Uh, we talked about the uh, marbled in anti Semitism of the That's Pastrami right. In this case, in this case the, the anti Semitism is the poppy or prune filling of the commentation of electoral That's right. calculations. <laughs> Perfect. Perfect. Yes. I was going to go with babka, but precious. Yeah, either yeah. way, I was going to do rugala. Um, well, look at us. Look at us. Look so. at us. We're all hungry. <laughs> um, okay, so scrolling yeah, through sure. the coverage of the Tim Walls VP announcement Tuesday morning, I received a message from a friend, a prominent Jewish American doctor. <laughs> 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 who identifies as a moderate. This makes me very sad, she wrote. The friend had already been teetering off, uh, uh, teetering on the cliff's edge about uh, Trump, believing him a better choice on anti-Semitism for her family, which includes or... a daughter studying on a Hold hotbed on. college campus. <laughs> what a strange phrase, believing him a better choice on anti-Semitism for her family. What the? Okay. Also, can we talk about When it comes to anti-Semitism for your family, who do you trust? <laughs> yeah. The headline: Liberal Jews. The very first example: Jew who identifies as a moderate. Yeah, <laughs> prominent okay. Jewish doctor. Some, some inconsistency. <laughs> yes, and then yeah, the prominent moderate Jewish doctor who is thinking about Trump as being better on anti-Semitism. <laughs> like once again, we're back to this like. Unless your definition of anti-Semitism is only anti-Zionism, what the fuck are you talking what about? The fuck? Um, you got to keep you got to keep your friends close and your Nick Fuentes is even closer. <laughs> exactly. Uh, and I love the, uh, the the daughter is studying on a hotbed college campus. You know, so hot obviously, bed. yeah, that is a sounds like bed. an it sounds like an eighties sex comedy. <laughs> yeah, hotbed. Um, <laughs> all right. Uh, uh, Let's see. Uh, uh, Kamala Harris, the Democratic presidential nominee, opting against Pennsylvania Governor Josh Shapiro, pushed her over the edge. To this friend, it was evidence that the candidate had caved in to anti-Jewish forces. And who's to say that she wouldn't do that in office, too? I didn't say it was anti-Semitic, she clarified. I said that she could not stand up to those who are. Damn. I'm not saying also she's a real Nazi. <laughs> but she ain't messing with no Jewish Yahtzee. Hey, there we go. It rhymed. Yeah, the, uh, it didn't mean anything though. Didn't mean anything. Doesn't need to. Oh yeah, I, she, I'm not saying I'm not saying she's a real Nazi, but a Jew on her ticket is something you will not see. Okay. Yeah. I'm glad you. I'm glad you got another shot at it. You feel good about that. You the meta good? thing is that it's by an anti semite. That's right. Uh, I fought back vigorously. Like Shapiro, Walls has been an, uh, been outspoken on, uh, outspoken on anti-Semitism and the horrors of October 7th, I said. A folksy Midwesterner, uh, the Minnesota governor brings electoral advantages that Shapiro and his coastal Polish didn't. I, I think it's pronounced Polish. Yeah, his coastal Polish didn't. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Not choosing a Jewish running mate is hardly disqualifying for office, I argued. Uh, and, you know, he, like, keeps doing this thing where he's just like, and I pointed out all these different reasons why that was totally ridiculous. But then I stopped. There was never going to be a way to definitively know why Harris chose Walls over Shapiro. Yeah. And therefore, I'm going to write an entire article with the assumption that it was anti-Semitism. And like literally, it just goes on and on about like if it was anti-Semitism, and here's moly. a million different reasons why it could be. Look, it, I'm not a conspiracy theorist, but when you really but if think I were. about it, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, I love like there's a part here. He goes to some non-Jews I talked to. Today's news was just a case of a tribal rooting interest not going our way. Quote. Oh well, you'll get the next one. Went their vibe. Why is it in quotes? <laughs> Why is it in quotes if it's a vibe? <laughs> Their vibe said. Yeah. <laughs> Their vaguely anti-Semitic the vibe. It's bad writing. I know. It's just awful. But when a Jewish leader this popular, he's not po – what are you talking – he's got like a 46% approval rating in his state that he governs. Uh from a state so necessary gets passed over, it becomes more than just a matter of losing a round of identity politics poker. It touches an existential nerve. Um, Josh Shapiro wasn't picked, and so that means we're going to die. Did you all know that? It we're is, actually going to die. I, I love this so much. This is like like Hollywood Reporter and Variety and like a, a few other of these like industry rags have occasionally done this thing where they have, uh, they have to project – like it's Zionist um, – uh, like Zionists trying to project any kind of like power within Hollywood. Cause as someone who is in Hollywood, uh, like uh, the, I know far more Jewish, uh, if they're not anti-Zionists, they are like, you know, um, uh, non-Zionists or people who are pro-Palestine. Um, uh, and this is, reminds me of like after the speech, that the uh, zone of interest director gave at the Oscars that it was followed up by like three weeks of all of these industry fucking, you know, uh, rags, like the reporter and variety just being like, Oh, uh -oh everybody's real mad about that. And it's like, literally nobody's really mad about that. <laughs> mm. It's just like this attempt to paint uh, Jewish people uh, as being, you know, a monolith of people who are mad anytime someone speaks out against Israel is just, it fucking, it, it makes me so mad, dude. It's just, ugh, I hate it. Oh, you're mad about that. I'm mad about that. <laughs> um, Let's see. Uh, Anti-Semitism. Well, uh, wh where will I, where will I end with this? Because I'm not going to read this fucking Yair f <laughs> fucking Rosenberg quote. Um, Walt's pro Jew, uh, uh, but Walt's pro Jewish bona fides don't mean the decision to put him on the ticket or the reaction to his appointment can't also be shadowed with anti-Semitism. Both Just can be true. Just because you're paranoid <laughs> yeah, <that's right>. don't <laughs> mean <laughs> they're, they're not, not after you. you. Boom. <laughs> Gotta pick a Jew. <laughs> a better Jew. <laughs> better Jew. <laughs> Gotta pick a Jew. A better <laughs> Oh shit! Where were you when I was doing the fucking Bonnie Bear thing? I should have done that instead. <laughs> Oi, well, whatever. Never mind. <laughs> oh, wow. I just, it is. You know, I, I can't, I can't help but like read these things and and get um incredibly mad at the just constant concerted effort by people to write on behalf of Jews. Uh, the, 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 what they're considering the silent majority of Jews, you know what I mean? Yep. Like they consider anyone who speaks out for Palestine to be either, you know, uh, you're not a real Jew or you're a capo or you're whatever kind of slur they want to call you. Self-hating. Self-hating. Sure. Um, but if you, uh, I mean, talk about don't kink shame. Jesus Christ. Yeah. I know. My self-hatred alone. Exactly. I have a question about this. I yes. mean, some of the some of the most frequent stuff I get online, perhaps because I'm a little Disney looking femme, is the oh, you're not a real Jew and you should go sleep with a Muslim person, date a Muslim person. Like I get a lot of very targeted stuff about my sexuality of like yes. you're gonna go fuck so and so. Mm -hmm. Do you guys get that? I don't. I mostly get threats on my child. 
<laughs> Great. <laughs> uh, yeah. It's so funny the way that it's like, I don't think other than like calling me like self-hating or, uh, you know, fake Jew or like a um, capo um, or like, you know, Qatari stooge or whatever. Mm -hmm. Um they can't do the sexual violence fanfic that they like to do with women. It, so, it's such a projection, though. It's like, yeah. oh, I, I have internalized all of this Islamophobia and like anti-Muslim sentiment. I'm going to assume that you have as well. And so I'm going to yes. threaten you with the sexuality yes. of Muslim men yes. in particular. And I'm like, don't threaten me with a good time. Like, what yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Great. <laughs> it's it's so funny because it is like it is so their their thought process is so transparent. You're just like, you know, what you're saying is just, this is just more evidence for the this ICC. This is on you, actually. Like, this is, this <laughs> yeah. is you inside your own mind. Yeah, like, your brain here is uh, very much on display, where your, your, your natural assumption is that everybody knows that, you know, uh, a Muslim man or an Arab man can't help but be a rapist or, you know, uh, sexu will sexually assault you. It's just like yeah. people say a this defiler. all the time. A defiler, yes. Of those poor, innocent white women, particularly the white right. girls. Yes, exactly, exactly. Girl. And it's just, uh, it's, I, I, I like it. Uh, I don't, I mean, I don't like it, but I, I, it's interesting when it comes from uh, Israelis. It's always the funniest when it comes from Israelis because they are really like, uh, they're not, quite in touch with i guess our own education on like the way in which uh white women were used uh during like jim crow and whatnot in order oh, to like the myth of the black and brown rapist was like justification yes. for lynch mobs yes. yes it's like oh all you have to do is pretend yes. that a white woman's virginity or purity is at risk and it justifies mass violence toward men of a certain type like we're so familiar with this and it's yes. so transparent. Yes. And and they I you know for whatever reason they don't seem to know that that's what those tropes bring up for like Americans. And so so when they do it I'm just do like you, you you just sound like a southerner from the fucking 30s, dude. Like you sound dear like Dear Katie, a I am writing to you from State Taman military base. <laughs> yeah, right. I want you to know Everything I do, I do it for you. Yeah. <laughs> it is fucking it is goddamn. Because like, they need they need to imagine Arabs raping their women. Yeah, so the, they they just need some pretext to do what so they, they need justify. to do, and there is yeah. something so deeply violative. Yeah, baked. In. You want to talk to about baked in? Yeah, you know, you know, you watch the Tantura documentary or you read yeah. the actual history. Yeah. Uh, well, ever since the beginning, and it, it must have something to do psychologically with if you're going to despoil a land, if you're going to cut a people off from its earthly connection to a place, to the to to the the what can I say the the birthplace of a culture. Yeah. Well, that that's a that's a pretty rapey. Yeah, yeah. they're having a simultaneous fantasy about someone else's violation, like projecting a fantasy of someone else's violation and a fantasy of their own saviorism. Mm -hmm. Like anytime someone says, oh, you're a queer woman and so Palestinians would throw you off a building or, oh, you're a self-hating Jew mm -hmm. and so you're going to be raped by an Arab man. I'm like, you just imagined a certain kind of violence by someone else that all happened in your own brain. Mm -hmm. You constructed a fantasy for yourself of that happening to me. You enjoyed that fantasy so much that you wanted to communicate it to me to cause me some sort of psychological pain or fear. So that or then maybe I arousal. Would seek, or arousal. Or whatever, so that then I would seek you as my protector and yes. you would be the one in control of whether or not I'm off a building and you would be the one in control of whether or not I'm raped. Like it's such a fantastical kind of erotic story they're telling themselves about who gets to be in charge of bodies. It's really alarming. Yeah, and yeah. that's and, and some of your some of my favorite content of yours has been you just have taking the absolute piss mm -hmm. with these, you know, just having a lot of fun in, in responding and playing with your cute persona, you know? Yes. And yes. and turning the tables on them. 
Yeah, I'm like, I'm I'm an adorable Disney femme, and I know that you're all furious that you'll never access me because <laughs> yeah. I don't sleep with Zionists. Like, mm -hmm. it's just never going to happen. And so, oh, so sad for you, but this guy over here who's, like, yeah. all for the, resi the resistance, mm, right. like, we're going to have a good time. Grieve That's about the, it. They're so mad about it. That is they're the, so mad about it. It's like, anti-Semitism for you not to flirt back with them. Just they like, you know. they feel so sad and rejected and i'm like i could call them a beta and i have so many men specifically on my tiktok who will reach out to me via dms and be like i'm an israeli and i'm a zionist and i would really love you to find on me or like humiliate me can i send you money to tell me that i'm like a useless genocider and i'm like uh like well, first of all what a cool way for me to be able to make money but no like i'm not interfacing with that at all but they're so wow. they so fetishize my rejection of them i'm like this is bizarre like please get get thyself to a therapist Dude, therapy. That's, called, that, that's that's a that's a bet mail nice <laughs> but like it, it, the amount of projection is so crazy uh you know because of the you know, recent allegations uh, that have come to light in Israel of the, you know, uh, how much sexual violence there is uh, among these like prisons filled with Palestinian prisoners. Mm -hmm. Allegations, and, fucking memoirs. Yeah, yeah fucking memoirs. Yeah, yeah, fucking, yeah. Fact, yeah. yeah. fucking video stories. evidence. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Fully yeah. evidenced. Yeah, and, and it's like, it's just nationally broadcast video evidence yes and it, 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 the craziest thing you know about it or one of the craziest things about it is you still see people when faced with actual evidence of their own peoples israelis uh, you know israelis faced with their own people doing sexual violence that they end up justifying it with just all the same hasbara talking points from uh the seventh things that have been completely debunked uh mm -hmm. you know and and it's just it's wild so we have uh, a story about a man uh named Mayer ben shitrit I, i'm not gonna pronounce this correctly i'm sure it's sheetrit but his name is spelled shitrit uh and he was, uh, he well, was let, one... matt matt let, let's be charitable shitrit shitrit okay <laughs> or shit eat yeah so uh Mayer shit, ben shit, shit eat. eater uh, is a uh, Israeli soldier who's one of uh, several who were um, arrested uh, as being a part of uh, the, you know, the raping of a Palestinian uh, prisoner um, in uh, Stay Taman. Did I do it right? You said it right this Fuck time. Fuck yeah. yeah. Sorry, I'm just very excited when I get one right. Um, why go? Uh, why uh, <laughs> you. All right. So uh, I'm going to like Wagyu. I, I, <laughs> I want to play a little bit from uh, my ear because he's someone who when I saw the story kind of unfolding uh, over the past week of like l literally thousands of people showing up and bum rushing um, the uh, the detention center in order to keep the soldiers uh, who were being trying to, you know, to get arrested for uh, who there was an attempt to arrest them for these rapes. Um, they were trying to keep the soldiers from getting arrested, which is I, I, you got to fight for your right to do that. Um, and so, yeah, I want to play a little bit of she treat. Do we have the clip of him from so, July? Yeah, here he is. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. OK, so I'm going to uh, from 2023. Yeah uh is it i i don't know yeah this is i think this is from before october 7th i believe okay i believe so, I'm, i might be wrong but so th yeah. this is uh i'm gonna read the subtitles uh for for people um who are just listening hello friends my name is Mayer ben shitrit i am currently oh, a reserve fighter in the benjamin sector i want to say a few words from the bottom of my heart i have been through a lot I have been through Lebanon, Hebron, I've been through battles, I've been through killings, I've buried friends, friends were killed next to me. And I asked myself, what happened to us? What happened to the IDF? 
How did the great IDF of the 1967-1973, the IDF that gives us uh, that gives a blow to the enemy uh, with the Argoon, Stern Gang, establish the IDF reprisals? Uh, how, shout out to the early terrorist organization. I know, shout about. out. Exactly, Argoon <laughs> shout out. Every shot needs uh, to be approved by the higher-ups. Uh, everything can be used only gradually. First uh, of all, tear gas, then sun grenades and rubber bullets, then, you know, all that other stuff. In case you get hit in the face, but something happened to the spirit of our command, the wonderful command that works day and night. Really, the best people, people who give their soul to the country sharp as knives. Only we have a virus inside. We have a virus inside, a lack of bustle, of moving forward, of charging forward, of closing the story, of dealing with the problem. Oh, that cursed empathy. Yeah. Why can't we go into the Negev with machine guns? Why can't we go with mag machine guns? Why can't we go in with a holding force of a grenade launcher? Uh... <laughs> Words of Gen Z, say less, literally shut the fuck up. <laughs> I do want to give a shout out, though, to Jeremy Strong. This is his best work since success. Oh, he is fantastic in this. Uh, yeah. Just doing a great job. I love Darth Kendall Roy here. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, so he, he's going on to just, uh, you know, talk about what, what are we doing to ourselves? This virus of self-restraint that it's the Israelis kind of a, famously yeah. have. And, and while he's talking about the bureaucracy, the pencil necks, the the pen or the the pencil pushers, are, but it's kind of a Sweeney Todd moment for all the musical theater fans out there. Where he's uh -oh. like, because he's he's about to say, in, in the the next subtitle was like, we had them, 150 to 200 terrorists, we had them right there, and it's like that moment where Sweeney Todd is like, I had him, his throat was there beneath my hand, and now he'll never come again. And that's when he decides we all deserve to die, and he goes off on a murderous rampage, and that leads to the whole meat pie thing. Anyway. That's your song. It is like that. Thank for you so today. Much. It's just like it. No, but it's 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 a black pill moment where he's no, 100%. like, fuck this. I can't, you know, fuck being a soldier. Fuck the code. It's, mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's Jimmy McNulty season five. Yes. Yes. 100%. Right. Except for instead of faking murders, he just does more. Commit exactly. Um, um, and yeah, so, you know, this guy, there's a bunch of videos of him out there. One in which, like, he is harassing people who, like, are uh, leftists who are doing a tour of, uh, for some reason, uh, Baruch Goldstein's um, grave. I, I suppose it's like a history tour of um, right-wing psychopaths in Israel. Um, and so uh, he's just there yelling at people about the truth about Arabs and that. Um, and then he was one of the uh, you know people who was riling other people up to try to get them to not have him arrested you know like come on everyone come down come down uh and make sure that they don't arrest me they did end up arresting him and uh you know i have a clip of after his detention that i think is uh reminiscent of the way our police treat white supremacist terrorists in this country hey, <laughs> I want to mention that the police, the military police have treated us really nice, truly, everyone. You see the support. And they do their job because he has to tell you, come in. But, but you felt, you felt the girls' souls there. The officers, the soldiers, all of them, with a hand on their heart, like telling you, thank you. But they can't tell it to you. You feel it. There was a day when they clapped from the sidelines. I mean, what can I tell you? He's like, secretly they love us. They have to slap us on the wrist. Yeah. And and just this like... This guy's not well. This guy is not well. Yeah. And uh, him being not well really... Uh, he took not well to the next level um, with an interview. I mean, I guess the next level was doing uh, prisoner rape um but the other level that he did was um he went on a recent um news program in israel uh but he wore a disguise um so we wouldn't recognize him so we wouldn't recognize him and uh this is a clip from that an israeli soldier was invited to uh defend the idf what is your feeling in front of the army in front of the prosecutor's office 
I think our <laughs> army is the healthiest army. For those listening, he's wearing a, like a full-on ski mask, like uh, <laughs> what what is it called? Balaclava, uh, uh, baklava. He's wearing a baklava. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so only his eyes are showing, and he's talking about how healthy the IDF is. Um, it's so funny because it's he could be dressed up in an IDF propaganda video impersonating their idea of a Hamas fighter. Yes, 100%. Like he's fact, dressed up as the as the stereotype of a terrorist. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Ready to rob Kevin McAllister and get hit in the head with a paint can. <laughs> is that a Home Alone reference? <laughs> yes, it is. I never um, saw that movie, but I... Oh, you got to see Home yeah, Alone, dude. Yeah, it's like there. Ghostbusters without the ghosts. Um, the commanders, the fighters, the field men. If there's anyone in the system above who wants to spoil us, I'm here to protect our good name. I'm very happy that the right knew how to wake up in the land of Israel. I don't want to make it a left wing thing or a right wing thing. I know it won't help because the right wing, uh, the people uh, of Israel are finally awake. He's, he's they talk so, so fast, damn it. Yeah. So, so, so uh, essentially, you know, what he's saying is uh, a lot of kind of what he was repeating in that other, uh, the first clip that we played of like this um, awakening of the right wing uh, in Israel in which like they woke up uh, to, you know, it's, it's, you know, the position that they've been holding since the seventh is like, now do you see, you know, uh, now do you see that we need to go into the Negev with machine guns and just, you know, kill them all? I mean... We're talking about like people defending this in, like complete psychopath here, and it just mm -hmm. it blows my mind the amount of like projection that is done by these, you know, Zionists, um, you know, mouthpieces who cannot stop, you know, DMing Katie to give you all of their weird rapey fanfic. Mm -hmm. And defend... question for you, Katie. Yeah. yeah. Let's just say, one of these guys years from now sees the light. Yeah, and comes to you for PTSD uh, therapy. Do you do you treat a former? Would you take on a a client who would who would participate in this? Um. With a caveat, yes. I think I take on clients absolutely who hold totally opposite positions to me, really, um, if we have misaligned values. But I tell them up front, I am, you know, a feminist oriented therapist. And this will be, you know, what I'm assuming in the future I'm functioning under my own license. I have no supervisors. I've completed my PhD program and I'm, let's say I have a private practice. Sure. Um, I would have the, the freedom to tell these people up front, like, these are my values. I hold this political position. It is informed by my values orientation and my research is not going to change. If you come to therapy with me, if you come to sessions with me, I will be holding you accountable for these things. And this is not going to be an easy process. Like, I, I think there has to be a willingness to bring folks back to their humanity who have abandoned it for whatever reason, whether it's socialization into propaganda, being told their entire lives that everybody hates them, being told their entire lives they're at risk. Like there's a very intentional process that the Israeli sort of culture and propaganda machine does to children growing up in Israel to tell them everyone hates you. You're fully isolated. You have to be willing to die to defend the rest of your people. You're at risk of rape and murder all the time. Um, and it breaks their brains. Like it really does psychological harm. And I think yeah. there's, this cultural abandonment that's happening now, like, well, all Israelis are sort of beyond, beyond help, beyond enlightenment, beyond sort of a return to this humanity that they have very intentionally amputated in order to exist within this system that breaks them, right? I don't want to be part of a system that, that breaks people. And so I think if someone yeah. were, were to say, okay, I need to grapple with these atrocities and these human rights abuses that I committed, and I, I don't want to make, for example, an Arab or Muslim therapist do that emotional labor to help an, an Israeli um, veteran revisit sort of light and having a soul. That's not on anybody else. And in fact, I think um, some of my identity could potentially provide them some solace um, yeah. of being held accountable by another Jewish person, knowing that this accountability is not because of my own anti-Semitism, whatever. 
um, yeah, I think I, I think I would. I don't think I would enjoy it. I think this is a, an imaginary client I would have a very difficult time with. But I think that's when you get a PhD in psychology, you take on the responsibility of caring for anyone who walks into your door. It would make a damn good book, though. Yeah, it would. That would be one of those single case study things you got to get um, consent for right at the start. Yeah. Uh, Tues- Tuesdays always with with, uh, with Ori. Yeah, so, there you go. <laughs> instead of Mari, that's great. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean, the amount of hatred that you get from people for the types of videos that you make. Um, do you ever find yourself just kind of like getting to the point where you don't know if this is healthy for you? Like, is there a point where you just go like, w- I need to center m- maybe my own mental health a little bit and just uh, take a step back? Or are you like me in which you go like, no, that means they win and you run purely on spite? Mm, great. Um, something of a combination of both. Nice. So I do think one of the things that people did not like about me at the beginning of this was I would make the bulk of my content about Palestine and anti-Zionism and unlearning Zionism, like really deconstructing it as a Jewish person. And then every once in a while, I'd also have my little thirst traps from sort of before all this started and and conversations about my dating life. And I'd, you know, show pictures of my family or I'd be on vacation or I'd be at pride. Pride really made people upset. Mm. Um, And I've tried very intentionally to say like, I'm not going to bifurcate myself. I am a whole person and I need to function on goodness and I need to function on the things that bring me joy, pleasure, and fulfillment as much as I need to function on rage and spite in this sense of, of fury toward injustice, whatever it is, those things are all a part of like holistically who I am. And so yes, you'll see content about Palestine and unlearning Zionism on this page. And also sometimes you're going to see me dressed up in foxy little pride outfits and if If you find that disgusting, I'm probably not the influencer for you. Um, And I do think that has allowed me to maintain a sense of authenticity through this. Like, I don't feel like I hop onto social media and I'm immediately putting on like performative Katie mask. It did feel like that at the start prior to October 7th, like when I had my sort of sex um, therapy, sex research stuff online, um, maybe two years ago, it did feel very performative and it was not sustainable for me. Um, So I think some of, both and I don't think anyone will bully me out of talking about Palestine Mm -hmm. and I carve I'd say 40 percent of my cognitive space and energy is dedicated to Palestine all the time but I do maintain the other 60 percent because otherwise I won't stay in this like yeah I've I've seen what it is for me to try to operate on spite um not sustainable I become a very unpleasant person to be around and I prefer to be quirky little Disney femme yeah. <laughs> well, that's good. I, you know, I feel like uh, my spite is my strength. Um, Love that for you. Yeah. Uh, hey, nom, listen, nom, 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 nom. it works for I, me. I hey, haven't hey, seen hey, Frozen hey, in hey, a hey. long time, but kind of didn't Elsa try to run on spite for a while and yes. kind of didn't go so well? She froze the whole kingdom. Yeah. Oh, damn. Yeah. I'm, I'm, oh, I'm, damn. <laughs> I'm, yeah, I, I'm, I'm keeping myself from watching Frozen because <laughs> uh, my I have a child who I know will watch it. And I'm trying to wait until the day in which it is absolutely forced upon me to watch Frozen. Um, well, I, I, I definitely, I totally support uh, you continuing to post thirst traps. Let me say why. That's <laughs> not a weird thing. Uh, in in terms of like being able to um, make sure that your audience knows the entire spectrum of who you are. I, I feel like I try to do that on this podcast. For example, uh, on last week's episode with uh, Ty Hickey, I told a story about uh, the time I put a turkey baster in my butt to do drugs. Mm-hmm. And I felt Exquisite. like it was important for people to know that. that and I, then I thought it was important to make as many turkey baster jokes for the rest of the episode as I could. Yes. Mm, and did I regret it? Sure. Do I regret <laughs> it now? Yes. Yeah. Do I like yeah. that people know that? Absolutely I do. Your vulnerable <laughs> shares are safe with me. Exactly. <laughs> Exactly. And you know, uh, yeah, it, like cause it, it, if I, I do feel like one of the issues is not a, it's a kind of a non issue, but it is, you know, something that I think we all three of us deal with is 
because of the fact that we speak out about this particular thing, you do end up kind of like gaining an audience that doesn't necessarily know you from anything else. And uh, so I try to continually remind people that mostly my brand before the seventh was me doing parody songs of Sopranos episodes and jokes about eating butt. And I feel like if you know that, then everything else kind of fits into a, a larger context about yep. who I am. I contain multitudes is what I'm saying, Katie. Yes, but but did you know, Matt, that really you're only allowed to advocate for one single cause? And Absolutely. if you divert from that cause, any of your energy, even a little bit, it means that you are fully a traitor to that cause. And in fact, you're a grifter and you yes. shouldn't ever speak about it again. Uh-huh. Yeah, I, I just I, wanted to I, make sure somebody had said that to you already. Yes, I, no, I, posted I, a, I posted a video of me playing the Moonlight Sonata <laughs> first movement this morning Yes, uh, on, uh, on Instagram. And like literally two minutes after it uploaded, there was a knock on my door. And there was like three Palestinian children crying and asking mm -hmm. me why. Why? Yeah. Why, why you did you George? abandon us? Yeah, yes, exactly. You've personally betrayed them. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And you're playing Beethoven, you know, fucking that's all that's anti. -Semitic. Yeah. And then and then my Holocaust surviving or not surviving Holocaust, not surviving. That's what they that's what they're most famous for. They didn't survive it. That is Great grandparents famous, showed yes. up and they said, why are you playing a German? That's right. Yeah. That's right. Mm -hmm. You might as well be playing Wagner. I think I commented under that uh, humming rock and roll McDonald's to you playing this. <laughs> <laughs> I think it would have worked, you know. Um, but Katie, thank you so much for talking to us about all of this stuff. Uh, you know, I I really appreciate the work that you've been doing, and I feel like you have been instrumental for a lot of people uh, in terms of kind of unlearning zionism mm. and uh i just keep doing what you're doing you're great yeah your, your work is really meticulous that's that's what i admire about it the most like it's not just well packaged and uh and and delivered in a in a digestible way but it's also very detailed very Thank well you. thought through pedagogically very sound i think oh my god so. I'm turning red now. This is too much praise, actually. Thank it's you a, so much. It's a, tra it's a trap for my thirst for lessons well taught. <laughs> yeah, yes. yes. Well, Google Scholar helps. I really feel like um, having having a background as an academic has been so instrumental for me in this mm. conversation. And I'm a theater kid. And I'm a psychologist. And I'm a researcher. And I'm a writer. And the storytelling piece has been really interesting to play with. So thanks, y'all, so much. Um, one of the things I always try to say every time I have some platform to talk about this. I talk about this idea of sliders and Daniel, you've heard this before, Matt, I don't know if you have, um, and I know I've made videos about it before, um, but this I think refers back to the conversation we were just ha having about only one version of yourself being able to exist. And so as a, th I'm putting my like therapist hat on right now, um, people experience dialectics. We are able to hold multiple contradicting things at the same time. And so this idea that happiness and sadness or enjoyment and pain just exist on these binary sliders and you move between you know being happy or being sad or experiencing joy or experiencing pain right. is ridiculous happiness yeah. has its own slider so does sadness so does joy so does pain so does shame so does excitement etc and you can be suffering 70 percent and feel grief for palestine 80 percent and your joy can still be at 40 and your pleasure at being around family can still be at 50 and all these other like we do indeed contain multitudes not only in our ideas but in our emotional experience and so i want to invite not only the two of you because i know you do this already that's part of the reason you run this pod um but the folks who are listening to you who are feeling shame or guilt or whatever for also being human beings while people suffer folks have suffered throughout time folks will continue to suffer if you yeah. yourself take on all of their suffering and allow yourself no reprieve, you will not actually be able to be effective in helping. Mm, so move yeah. those sliders as is needed. Literally every day of your life that you've been alive, no matter how you how long you've been alive, people have been suffering in unimaginable ways, not mm -hmm. so far from you. So mm -hmm. you know, thank you for that. I, I, I must be hungry because when you said, Daniel, I told you about the sliders, I was like, oh yeah, she did tell me about the little burgers. Uh, it's a tiny metaphor burgers. for sometimes you need little bite-sized yes, content. Yes, yes, nom, 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 nom. Yeah, <laughs> tiny burgers sound good. Oh, my God, Katie, you're right. That's, you're all I that's all I took from what you said, too. 
was, uh, how good sliders are. Um, There's a thirsty joke in here somewhere too. Yeah, I'm just not gonna look for it. Yeah, don't look for it. But I want. I'm thirsty for some lemonade and hungry for the sliders of joy. Actually, <laughs> uh, burger content is in our last episode, which is yes. Patreon only. Jacob Burger, folks, go to Patreon.com/slash/BatHasBara. Sign up. Get yourself right. two episodes today. Don't That's just, right. Ooh. This episode has been fantastic, but don't you want more? Yeah, aren't you hungry for more sliders? Go, go more, go to, more wagyu, <laughs> wagyu. Oh, it's callback time. It's call. Let's everything. We're doing it all. But no, Katie, I, I really do appreciate you coming on this podcast and um, you know, dealing with us, uh, fucking morons here. Uh, but you know, morons with a heart of gold is what Absolutely. we do. Absolutely, I will say you mentioned the the man guests, girl guests, women guests uh-huh. earlier on. You two have such sweet boy energy, but while oh. the boy energy on this pod is really <laughs> present. Yeah, there's a lot of boy energy. There's some dude guy stuff, like a bro man stuff happening here, and I just, yeah. it's cute, it's charming. It's, yeah, it's present. Yeah. It, it just, yeah, so there are people who are into that, Katie, in your research? Uh, uh, yes, dude bro That's, energy, yeah. I think yeah. there's a subsection of the population that might find that charming. Not me. I'm bromophobic. Kink shame, not kink same on this That's one. Right. <laughs> well, thank you so much. Uh, where can people find you and your work? So I am on Instagram at k.w.bogan. I'm on TikTok at Sexuality Scholar. If you want to check out my actual scholarship, look up Catherine Bogan on Google Scholar. I've now been cited over a thousand times. Yes, she wow. is a legitimate scholar. Wow. Um, so if you want to read any of my papers on sexual functioning, that's where to go. All right. Check that out there will be links to your socials in the bio of this show uh what can i say thank everyone for being out there and for allowing us to give you a little bit of joy in these dark dark times uh move those sliders over you know whether they be beef or pork no pork (laughs) no pork not kosher another Uh, non-kosher thing that's right uh, patreon.com slash bad has barra bad has barra at gmail.com all right everyone thank you thanks you so much for listening <laughs> killing you. it killing it matt you're doing, I'm doing great, great. Home, i'm not i'm plane. not sliding i'm, 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 I'm fading <laughs> i'm sliding i'm thinking of sliders shit is crazy and until next time from the river to the sea uh, Orgasms may not free Gaza, but hey, at least they're free. Hey, I like it. Jumping jacks was us. Push ups was us. Krav Maga us. All karate us. Taking Molly us. Michael Jackson us. Yamaha keyboards us. Jar Jar Binks not us. Andor was us. Keith Ledger Joker us. Endless Red Success. Happy Meals was us. McDonald's was us. Being happy, us. Bikram Yoga, us. Eating food, us. Breathing air, us. Drinking water, us. We invented all that shit.